Normal people, smart people, wouldn't even go outside in weather like this. Unfortunately, I've never been accused of being either. The condition, it looks more or less like we had in Makalu. Maybe a maybe little warmer and less wind. The only things that I want to ask you is, do you confirm that the first and the second should be the only day that the sun could appear? Or half day, only maybe the second? With the 36-hour weather window forecasted by Carl Gobble in Innsbruck, we set off into a storm after only three days of rest. Five and a half hours later, we arrived at Camp 1 with heavy legs, feeling our prior acclimatization mission. Settling into the VE-25, we brewed tea and recounted the excitement of the day, including one significant crevasse fall by Dennis. If you don't have rope, you go a lot down there. Eh? Uh, there's about, okay, not 60, but 40 meters. Yeah. Exactly. Very deep, very deep crevasse. <laughs> Dennis, no! I was shaking a little bit, because when I fell down and make turn, it was a small fixation in the bottom. Trick! My eyes. In the bottom. As the sun set on G1, we settled in for a long, cold night. Ice cream, you take. Yes. Ice cream, you take. Yeah. Day two, we awoke to the same storm, but continued upward, hoping the conditions would get better. Unfortunately, they didn't. The weather's still bad, we arrive to camp too tired and full of doubt. <coughs> also because we, when we start from base camp, we didn't recover completely. It was only three days in base camp. We spent four days on the mountain and three days only in base camp. So this is the things that make me worry, that maybe we don't have power enough. Just as Carl Gobble had forecasted, day three dawned under calm skies. We began climbing to camp three. We are very high. We can, we can, we can see a lot of mountain from here. Should be six, nine. And uh, tonight at 3, p uh, 3 a.m., 3 o'clock in the morning, we will start from here and we'll attempt the summit. To put it lightly, our sleep was fitful. The sun greeted us over the shoulder of Gashabram 1 as we crested the 7,600 meter plateau. Its warmth was welcomed after the long, cold night of climbing. Every step became a challenge, a battle between mind and body. Body wanting to go down, mind willing us to go up.
And suddenly, as if in a dream, we were there, on top of Gashabrim 2, in the heart of winter. But getting up is only halfway. We began the descent into worsening weather. 14 hours after leaving, we arrived back at our tent, totally exhausted. With burnt lungs and cold feet, we tried to sleep, coughing through the night. <coughs> <coughs> The morning of day five dawned terribly. We packed up, hoping to make the descent all the way to base camp. We only made it to camp one. We rolled back into the BE-25 and lit the stoves, trying desperately to warm our hands and feet. The following morning, after our fifth night in freezing sleeping bags, we began the descent to base camp in terrible weather, the worst we'd seen yet. Our trail forced us to traverse under a huge slope of G5. Seracs looming overhead, we knew the slopes were now horribly wind-loaded from the storm. As our progress slowed, I felt in the pit of my stomach it was only a matter of time before something went terribly, terribly wrong. Unfortunately, it did. As a massive avalanche off the slopes of G5 overtook us, the world became chaotic and black. Just tell me what happened. <laughs> Big avalanche. <laughs> all three buried, miraculously, we all survived. Six arduous hours later, and two major crevasse falls, we walked the final 100 meters to base camp. Our cooks and staff were overjoyed to see us alive. The first winter ascent of Gashabrim 2 at an end. It's impossible to say just how lucky we all feel simply to be alive.